What's good, y'all? It's the messenger of God here coming to drop one for y'all today. And what brought me to you guys today, I was just thinking of that young donkey, that that cult, that innocent baby that Jesus used to ride in on into Jerusalem. You know, first and foremost, just thinking of him, you know, how he had to um, look towards Jerusalem, knowing what he came to do and what he had to do for us because he didn't have to do it but he did right and i thank the lord for that you know and i'm praying for everybody right now everywhere because of the times that we're living in right now i'm seeing a lot of things come to pass here recently and as of late you know there's no way you can deny uh what's going on because god word will not return to him void and everything that is coming to pass it has been written it's already done you know, and no matter what is taken away from us, no matter how many Bibles, how many times people can deny the word of God, it's going to still come true, you know, because his His word, you know, he, he never lies and he always tells the truth. But for us that who believes, you have to just keep believing and keep having faith. You know, you have to consistently pray and have faith, you know. You cannot just turn your head away from what's going on because it's going from one end to the next. And you guys should know just by watching the things that's that's happening in this world today and how, you know, certain nations and people are clicking up, you know what I mean? Just to make the, the word of God true, you know? And like I said today, we, I'm telling you, we have to humble ourselves and pray, you know, if my people, let me, let me go to that. Which one is that? I think that's 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. You know. I'm going to see. Because he said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, you know, then, then what I seek and hear from, from their land, you know, then will you heal their land. You know, I don't want to say it the wrong way, but you guys, we have to humble ourselves and pray. You know, humble yourselves and pray, you guys. But today I'm going to bring forward to you guys Mark 11. You know, and I've seen this story in John 2. I've seen this story in, in Matthew. But I'm going to bring to you guys today in um, Mark 11. And it's the the entry. I call it the, the it's the entry of of Jesus coming into to Jerusalem. But I'm going to call this the entry and the exit. You know. And we have to humble ourselves. That's just like the most that I got out of this story. You know, just going over it last night and this morning. You know. So let me get started reading so it won't take so long, all right? Mark 11, let's go. When they were getting near to Jerusalem to Bethphage, or Bethphage, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent ahead two of his disciples and instructed them to go into the village in front of you. And as soon as you enter it, you will find a tide, a colt tied, which has never been written on by anyone, okay? Unfasten it and bring it here, okay? That's what he said. He said, go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as ye be entered into it, you shall find a colt tied, whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him, okay? If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? answer tell them y'all that the lord needs it and he will send it back here presently i'm reading the amplified of king james virgin um i have the king james virgin but i'm, I'm going to read the amplified okay so you guys can understand it all right so tell them that the lord needs it and he will send it back here presently okay so they went away and found they called tied at the door out in the winding open street okay and they loosed it all right and some who were standing there said to him what are you doing untying the coat okay that's that little baby donkey y'all and they brought the coat to jesus and threw their outer garments up on it and he sat on it okay and many of the people spread their garments on the road and others scattered a layer of leafy branches y'all which they had 
cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed cried out with a cry of happiness, Hosanna, be graciously inclined and propitious to him and be propitious to him. Praise and blessed and blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise and blessed in the name of the Lord is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna, oh, save us in the highest heaven. Verse 11 says, And Jesus went into Jerusalem and entered the temple enclosure. And when he had looked around, surveying and observing everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany together with the 12 apostles. Now, you guys, this is what I got from this. Now, I've written down just a little bit. And when I was getting there, I was I, it was just like I was going through the words. And I saw, when I saw, and he sent two of his disciples. I was saying like, it was just like, the meaning of it, it was just like he knew ahead of time. You know what? God always know ahead of time, y'all. He always know ahead of times before things even happen, right? He knew what was going to be up ahead of him. God sees and knows all. He's what? Omnipresent. You guys know I love saying that because he is, okay? God sees all and know all. Didn't they wonder, how did he know all of this? And if they didn't believe or knew he was the Messiah, okay? How did they not know? That's just like as if they didn't know that, that, that he was the Savior, you know? Y'all rolling with the Savior and y'all don't know it? He knew these things ahead of time and then he told y'all to go ahead of him, you know? And that that cult would be there. Listen, y'all, he instructed them to go. Which to me, that's just like this. Seek and ye shall find what's ahead of you. That I already told you what will be there. Only Jesus, only God can do that, y'all. Okay? He told them what they would find. Like I told you, he's omnipresent. He already knew. Okay? Have I not been with you this long? This long? Okay? And y'all still don't know who I am? I walk with you. I talk with you. I heal the sick and raise the people from the dead. But you never recognize who I was. Okay. Does that make any sense, Sean? Man, I'm telling you. This is a, this is a trip to me, you guys. That donkey and that little coat, right? It says here in biblical times, royalty will ride in. We'll ride on a donkey during the periods of peace, right? rather than a horse which was associated with war okay when jesus rode into jerusalem on a court on a colt or a young donkey he fulfilled a prophecy that a king will come in peace and humility to jerusalem okay and y'all when they use those little palm leaves that they had right they laid it in the path of jesus okay when he was coming which symbolizes um grace okay it symbolized grace and victory okay and Jerusalem is the holy city, y'all. It's the holy city to the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims. And pilgrims flock to the city every year. A Greek Orthodox priest walks along the Via Dolorosa in the old city, Dolorosa, in the old city of Jerusalem, where Jesus is believed to have carried the cross, okay? So, yo, you guys, just think of these things, you know what I'm saying? When I read in verse 2, it's something, right? Something that have never been written on. When you think of this, he said, get a coat that never been written on. And to me, when I thought about that, I'm like, he wanted you to get something that's never been written on. And it made me think just like the inside of the tomb that had never been laid on when they laid his body, right? When they wrapped them up in, in those, in those, um, and those wraps that they wrapped them up in the frankincense and myrrh, you know, before they put him in those wraps, right? They had to lay him in a tomb that has never been touched, right? Something that's been laid in, never been touched. To me, it symbolizes like innocence, y'all, pure and free. He humbled himself as an innocent child, just like the cult. Y'all like that little cult. Like, no fault, no fault found in him. His presence was like a gift given to the world that none has ever seen before, okay? So when he reached Beth, Beth Fodge, or Beth Page, I said Beth Fodge, on the Mount of Olives, which was the only short distance from Jerusalem, right? I said they brought the coat 
hold on. Okay. Let's talk let's talk about this part first. The coat that was tied by the door, y'all. When I when I heard the coat that was tied by the door, you know what it made me think of? That that doorway made me think of. Because see, the coat was tied by the door, right? But there was a doorway. You know, I, I always be thinking of just like, you know, how he told them to put the lamb's blood over the door and how he covered us with his blood and how he, he was gonna come. You guys, this doorway right here that the coat was tied by. You know, I went over this with, with my mom because I wanted her to, to hear where I was coming from, right? And of course she interacts with me, all right? This doorway, y'all, it was like this. It was his entry, but also his exit, y'all, okay? Because that's how he was going to come. He was entering into Jerusalem and he was going to lay down his life. He was gonna die in Jerusalem. Okay, life and death. Okay, coming and going. Okay. Then, not only was he going to die as an exit, but return and leave us with his Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, 11 and 7, when they brought chapter 11, verse 7, okay, they brought the coat to Jesus, but they put their garments up on the coat. That was never touched, okay? Nor did Jesus touch the coat. If you if you notice that, because the disciples, they took off their garments, y'all, and they laid it on the coat and they covered they covered them up, right? Okay, look. Okay, so not only did Jesus not touch it, okay, they put their garments on it. And they also put the garments on the ground at his arrival, okay? Those in the palm leaves, right? They put those on the ground at his arrival to jerusalem okay upon his upon his entry y'all and i said that coat means he came in humility and peace and those palm leaves was grace and victory right y'all remember that but those garments to me means royalty and i said it means a cup and a cover up like protection okay it made me think of how he covers a multitude of sins okay without a spot or blemish okay when i when i heard how they cover that coat with their garments it's just like then you see like like it, it, because it's a baby how he wanted us to become just like innocent babies you guys he covers all of us okay oh <sighs> when the disciples first covered the coat with their garments it was like protection y'all protecting the innocent okay covering us with his blood okay because that is what he's going to do later on down the line with his life okay now he also said to not he also said to not to look at things one way but to look at things another way not as though they were because sometimes that way we look at things we have to look at them differently right that may look bad for you but then it's for your good, you see? Things that might look bad is for your good. Just like Jesus, how he laid down his life for us, only for us to have eternal life through him. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I said, how did you know who he was upon his arrival, but did not understand his exit, okay? You was with him this whole time. I'm gonna say it one more time. How did you know who he was upon his arrival, but did not understand his exit? He had to leave behind what he was going to come back for, okay? He had to leave us his Holy Spirit in order for us to understand him. He gave us three days to learn how to walk, just like a baby. But isn't that something we have to return right back to where we started, right? In his image. All for us to build that one body of Christ in spirit and in truth. That's why we must be together, you guys, on one accord, okay? It makes me think of which is his son. Because if we have to be born again and walk in his image, it made me think of us becoming just like him, okay? Which is his son, which makes us all God's children, okay? And he's coming back for us just like he did his son, 
okay he showed us an example of how he was to come okay and how he was going to leave now i wanted to jump down here to this fig tree that they talk about before he went and start turning over those tables right man i'm gonna read some of it y'all um verse 12 okay the the cleansing of the temple on that following day when they had came this is chapter 11 of mark verse 12 let's go on the following on the day following when they had come away from bethany he was hungry oh my goodness y'all when i heard he was hungry i was just thinking of him it's just like it wasn't him in the spirit because he was still there but in his flesh but i don't think it was for food i think it was for it was for completely something else you know he already knew what was coming i know it was just like he was already ready because it was just like he already knew what he came to do he was ready for god to come and get him you know here he is in the flesh you know what i'm saying trying to do it's not even he was he was trying to do but he was coming to do what he knew he had to do okay now look at this part and seeing in the distance a fig tree covered with leaves he went to see if he could find any fruit on it for in the fig tree the fruit appears at the same time as the leaves but when he came up to it he found nothing but leaves for the fig season had not yet come and y'all when I when I hear this, y'all, it, it it just it just took me like a whole new place because I was just thinking like faith without works is dead. Like I couldn't believe this this tree, right? And it's just like this. I wrote down if you don't if you don't have Jesus, okay, you don't have anything. You don't have nothing. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have nothing. Cause without Him, you know, without Him, your works is dead. It's just like saying. Faith without works is dead. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have nothing. Because without works is dead. Without faith, you know, how do you expect to, to, to see the unseen? How do you expect things to, to come to pass without having faith? God is moved by faith. Okay? So look. And Jesus cursed that tree, y'all. After Jesus cursed that tree, I was brought to... I mean, let me try to jump there real quick. I don't want to take too much of your time. But look, I jumped to John uh, 15. John 15, 4, 5, and 16. Let me read them real quick. Okay. Here it is. King James Version. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye accept ye abide in me okay let me read over here for y'all don't understand dwell in me i like the breakdown though and i will dwell in you live in me and i will live in you just as no branch can bear fruit of itself without abiding in being vitally united to the vine neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me so see if you don't have faith and you do not believe in jesus how you expect to bear fruit okay it's just like this because if you're full of hell <laughs> if you're full of hell right your fruit will be corrupt and you can only put out what you are made of if you ain't producing and doing nothing why are you here you still him you know why are you here nothing from nothing leaves nothing okay just how my mom was said saying nothing from nothing leaves nothing okay that's why you have to have faith y'all now, let me read what verse 16 had said, okay? I'm going to read the King James Version. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that ye shall go and bring forth fruit, see? And that your fruit should remain, see? That whosoever ye ask, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. He may give it to you, Okay? Therefore, you got you have to believe in God, okay? We didn't choose him. He chose us. And whatever it is that you put out that is of God, that you put out that is right, right? It will be good. It will remain forever, okay? Just know that, all right? Now, I don't know if I'm going to jump into this real fast, but 
man, what else connected to this was the whole Matthew chapter 7, okay? The whole Matthew chapter 7. I don't know even if I had time, but when I heard it, I said, man, they, they talk about everything here, including the fruit, like including what I wanted to hear, okay? I'm going to read some of it and see if I have a, a little bit of time. Okay, do not judge and criticize and condemn others so that you may not be judged and criticized and condemn yourselves, okay? For just as you judge and criticize and condemn others, you will be judged and criticized and condemned. And in accordance with the measure you use to deal out to others, it will be dealt out again to you. That's why we must be careful, little mouths, what we say, what we hear, what we do, what we touch. Everything, y'all, I'm telling you that it's critical. Why do you stare from without at the very small particle that is in your brother's eye, but do not become aware of and consider the beam of timber that is in your own eye? It's just like this. How you going to call it? Call out what somebody else is doing when you have something in your eye too. Like, like for instance, how you going to sit up there and knock somebody else for what they doing, but you don't see what it is that you're doing. Okay. Remind yourself, we have all fall short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. That's why we must do everything not to sin, okay? So if you know that there's something wrong, then don't do it, okay? It says, you hypocrite. First get, the beam of, first get the beam of timber out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly. Take that tiny particle out of your brother's eye. Do not give that which is holy, that sacred thing to the dogs. And do not throw your pearls before hogs, lest they trample upon them with their feet and turn and tear you into pieces. Keep on asking, it will be given to you. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking reverently, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who keeps on asking receives, and he who keeps on seeking finds. And to him who keeps on knocking, the door will be open. Okay, I was thinking of all of this with, with that fig tree, you guys. Man, it's like I want to keep on reading and keep on keep on reading this whole thing. Okay? That's Matthew chapter 7, y'all. Make sure that you finish reading that. Because like I said, when when I man, let's go. Where am I at? I'm gonna read a little bit more. Verse 9. Or what man is there of you if his son asks him for a loaf of bread, will hand him a stone? Okay? What, will he hand him a stone or what man is there of you if his son asked him for a loaf of bread will you hand him a stone or if he asked for a fish would you hand him a serpent it's just like this w would you do your own brother like this would, would you even do your own self like that you know how, how could you mistreat somebody and do that to him or, or, and do that to them right if you then evil as you are know how to give good and a vent an advantage and advantages gifts to your children how much more will your father who is in heaven perfect as he is give good and advantage things to those who keep who keep on asking him so then whatever you desire that others would do to you would do and for you even so do also to and for them okay for it is sums up the law and the prophets enter through the narrow gate you guys enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and spacious and broad is the way that leads to destruction and many are those who are entering through it so you guys be careful be careful of always trying to do what monkey see what monkey see monkey do okay don't always do what monkey see and monkey do sometimes you you no, not sometimes you need to be able to think for yourself that's why you got to have god for yourself in order for you to you know to do what you're supposed to do you need to get god for yourself so that way you would know like i said if you were separated from from a person right how would you know the right thing to do if you don't know it for yourself okay just stop like I would say handicapping yourself, you know, stopping yourself from from getting what you need to know for yourself, all right? Sometimes you need to find the truth out for yourself because then if something is placed in front of you and you don't know the truth, right? If something is placed in front of you and you don't know the truth, it's just like this. How would you know? How would you be able to tell the real from the fake? How how would you? You know? Somebody could tell you, somebody could tell you anything and you will believe it. 
all because you don't know the truth okay so just think of that sometimes because if you don't believe there's no way that a person right now can say that they don't know jesus or know of him because it's so many things that's going on you should know him by name and you should know how he is and what he expects you should know right from wrong okay right now we're in the days of people just choosing with what they want to do okay i told you it's no lukewarm you either hot or cold you either good or evil you know so you got to make that choice look at look at what's going on right now in the, in the world you know wars and rumors of wars you know what i'm saying i'm seeing plagues okay you know the next thing which is already starting to happen is famine look how many people is is is, is running you know trying to come to one place you know with other people and 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 and, and different type of folks that's probably mixed in the crowd you know what i mean you guys got to be careful and always stay vigilant okay god said be careful for nothing and keep your eyes open but what we really need to do what gives you look what we really need to do is humble ourselves and pray okay because what's going to happen will happen okay but are you ready because he's going to come at a time you don't expect so that's why you have to be ready okay now let's keep going but the gate is narrow contracted by pressure and the way is straightened and compressed that leads away to life and few are those who find it beware of false prophets who come to you dressed as sheep but inside they are devouring wolves y'all it's always like that you know what i'm saying sometimes you you sometimes you can know that people are wolves in sheep clothing but that does not mean you don't have to associate yourself with them and hang with them or anything like that. But but just know, just know already. See, these things, you have to have God in order to discern that, okay? You don't, you don't have to like treat people a certain way or do people a certain way, but you can also, you know, pray and rebuke. And another thing too, you guys, you don't, you don't always have to be loud about uh, everything either. Sometimes you can pray on the inside, you know, especially like what, if something's going on, and if something is around you that, that may be going on that, you know, that's wrong. Pray on the inside, you know, say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you know, whatever it is, that's not right. Lord Jesus, take it out. You know, keep us safe from all her harm and danger, Lord Jesus, whatever is going on, Jesus, you know, take care of the Lord. You know, like I said, I believe in the power of healing you know, pray, pray about it. You know what I'm saying? Anything that goes on, I'll be like, Lord, bless us to be able to heal and to self-heal, Lord Jesus. You know, a lot of things come by faith, you know, faith in God and, and, and faith. If you you got to have faith. You got to have faith. Okay. You got to seek. Okay. I'm telling y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm telling y'all these times right now, you better watch it. Watch that famine creeping on up. Watch these wars. Watch these invasions. Watch all of these things that's happening that the Bible already said that was going to come to pass. So when you see these things happening, don't be like, uh-oh, 